How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're gonna to be talking about two simple upgrades that we're gonna to do to the RV to make it just a little bit safer. So starting off, these two little modifications really aren't that difficult, but the first one's definitely more expensive than the second one. And the first one is the Fire Slayer. It's a fire suppression tube that when it has a flame around it, it'll burst and put out the fire that's in the area. So it's good and small, compact areas. So that's why I wanted to put one behind the fridge because the fridge is one of those things. There's been a lot of recalls. There's been a lot of fires with RV fridges, these absorption refrigerators. So this will just give me a little bit of peace of mind back there. Now, this isn't the only brand that puts out these tubes to be able to suppress the fire in these compact situations. Uh, Protang is another system that is out there. Uh, you have to go to them and have them install it. I'm kind of a DIY guy. I think their product is amazing and I do see why they want to install it themselves because you, there are some things you wanna consider when installing this. So the kit that this came with is it came with clamps to be able to clamp it back there. They don't want this rubbing around in there and chafing and, and having it break because there's so much vibration that it works through this outer sheathing here. So we do wanna consider that. We don't want it to be up against anything sharp. And uh, we do have a gauge on here. They did say that you should mount that in a place where you can check on that occasionally. So they said it'll go from zero to 15, depending on if it's warm or cold outside. So it is a gauge that you can check. This thing will last for about uh, five years. Now, one of the intended uses for this is to be able to use it in an engine compartment. So it can handle a decent amount of heat and it's rated for down to negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So it can handle uh, this outside area behind the fridge. So we're just gonna go through here, use the clamps because they're coated so that it's not going to mar up this pipe. And we're gonna support it back in there. We don't really want it touching anything that's gonna get extremely hot so they say to keep it away from like mufflers and stuff like that so uh, we want it close but we don't want it touching any kind of burner assembly now this isn't complicated but it can be a little bit difficult trying to get these clamps in there so i'm just getting a, a hole started and i'm using this to be able to screw in the screw you can even if you had a quarter inch on the end of that so if you were putting in just like a normal screw you can you can still do that so that's just a little tip for trying to get this in there you can get an electric one, but this one didn't cost me anything and it's working just fine. So just a quick tip for you, if you're gonna be working on the back of the fridge, like installing something like this, it's best just to turn off the fridge because the back of the absorption refrigerators, they do get hot, the pipes get hot. That's that's how it works. So, But we have it all secured in there. We can have our gauge on the side that we can readily see. And uh, we're just gonna put the covers back on and we're gonna move on to number two. Now, both of these are along the lines of eliminating a weak point on the RV. And I think the outlets in an RV are, are somewhat of a weak point, especially on something like this fireplace. So I'm gonna be swapping out the outlet behind it for a, a normal outlet or a more of an industrial outlet to be able to go back there. And really this isn't difficult at all. We just need to be able to remove the fireplace, get to the outlet back there and swap it out with this one. And so when you open up the old one, you can see that the connection style inside of there really isn't that robust. It's really just a, a punch down where you just take the wire and you punch it down into the system and it splits the sheathing on that wire. And that's what the connection is. And I think that's a, a bit of weakness point, especially on something like this that can be drawing high amounts of current through there for long periods of time. It can be on for hours and that, that punch down system for something with that large of a draw, I don't think is, is a great plan. So this outlet helps eliminate that. So pulling it out, just wiring this in, putting a cover plate on it, it's, it's not difficult at all, but it eliminates that weak point in there. You can look on social media and you can find where some of the boxes have, have burnt up. So taking care of the electrical system, we talked about that before in previous videos, but this is just eliminating a weak point where there's a high current draw in the system. If you look at the outlet that we replaced it with and you look at the back connections, rather than it being a punch down, you can see that we, we can have a, a solid connection on there. We can torque down these screws, have a, a much broader connection than just that punch down. So it's a much better system. And the outlets, if you get an industrial outlet, if you're swapping them out on the RV, uh, that industrial outlet usually has a little bit better connection for when you're plugging things in. It's a more solid connection inside that actual outlet. 
It's not always practical to replace the outlets with other ones in your RV with the, the more home residential style because the walls are so thin and that's why they use the style that they do and so you can't always swap them out. But something like this with the fireplace, it was great being able to swap that out because we had plenty and tons of room back there to, to be able to make that happen with a more robust outlet. So I think that's gonna do it for today. Two really simple things to be able to do on the RV. One's a little more expensive than the other, but I think they help eliminate those, those weak points on the RV. And that's just gonna help us enjoy the RV even more. So I hope you guys like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. If we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.